So welcome everybody. If you're joining right now on Facebook, we just danced to the Jonas Brothers song, Waffle House. I highly recommend that you take two and a half minutes out of your day later and you go listen to that song because it's like a Christmas present. Go give yourself that gift and turn it all the way up. So um, coming off of yesterday, I want to hear from you in the chat. What, what is it that's intriguing you? What is your mind starting to like ponder and and what is feeling really like um still like it eludes you like where are you stuck and where are you starting to feel a little bit more um like you're you're getting it i just would like to hear some of the ahas in the chat and some of the struggles you get what you are being right we talked about that right we don't get what we want we get what we are very consistently we talked about gravity. If I throw something up, it's going to hit the ground, right? Because it's consistent. I want to tell you something. Um, this is a Esther Hicks uh, analogy, and I think she does a really good job with this one. So you know how when you have ever in your life boiled water, right? You make spaghetti, you're making eggs, whatever it is, hard boiled eggs. You go to the sink and you get the water and you put it in the pot and then you go to the stove, right? And when you put that pot on the stove, what happens? And I know this is like very elementary, but like it's it's important, right? Because we want to remember to remember. So you put the pot on the stove. Does it boil right away? No, it doesn't. So what happens? Well, it gets hot. And then does it simmer right away? No, it gets hot and then it gets hotter and then it gets hotter, right? And eventually it boils. If you leave a pot on that fire, just like gravity, does it always boil or will it just not boil sometimes? What's the physics of it? It's always, it's, it's consistent. In fact, I'm guilty of forgetting that I left the pot on the stove, then everything in the pot gets boiled out and then I ruin the pot because it's consistent. It doesn't do me a favor and go, oh, she's not coming, we'll stop boiling. Or, oh, three out of four times it doesn't boil anyway. No, it always boils. So why am I bringing that up? Well, because this is a great analogy for how we manifest in our life. So what would happen if I was boiling the water and it wasn't boiling and I got frustrated because it's only been on the stove for 90 seconds or two and a half minutes and still not simmering, nothing. It's just getting hot, but it's not, it's not showing me the result yet. So what would happen if I decided that I was really, really frustrated and I started to doubt that it was going to boil ever. And so I would pick up the pot and I would look to see, and then I would get so mad. I would like turn it off completely, just turn off the fire walk away and then think about it again, turn the fire back on, then see that it's not boiling and turn off the fire. So would the water ever boil if I kept turning on and off the fire? No, never. It's consistent. You can't do that. You have to keep it hot. So every single day, right? I've been doing this podcast for seven years. So we built this really awesome audience of amazing women like you who are so compassionate, smart, kind, supportive, just the best people. And whenever we get stuck in a conversation, it's because they keep turning off the water. So I'm like, what do you mean, Kath? What are you talking about? Here's what I mean. In order, right, for us to boil that water, we have to sustain we have to sustain the heat. And as you sustain the heat, that's all you have to do. And then it's consistent. It's inevitable. It will boil. When people are working on their own energetic vibration, learning to sustain it, a lot of times it'll be like four hours or it'll be like a day and they'll have had a high vibe. And then they'll come to me and say, nothing happened. Forget it. It doesn't work. Nothing's different. Nobody called. It's been three days. I felt good and I'm sick of feeling good because it's not working. And I didn't make a million dollars this weekend because I felt good for three days. And this is all, 
it's garbage, right? So they turned off the water. So it's not, it's not hot anymore. And then we're like, let's try it again. And I'm not joking, I'm not exaggerating, but when people get really honest with me and I ask them to be super honest, I go, how much of the day was that water on the fire? How much? Like fire, I mean, it's on. The way we were just dancing, like it's on. They're like, it wasn't. I go, okay. So how much of the week total? They're like 10 minutes. I go, okay, I go, okay. So then you spent 10 minutes, right? Feeling into what it feels like to be a force that you are. You spent 10 minutes in full alignment with who you are, with not your little self ego, who you are, but who you are as a being, as an entity that came to the world to create in this field, to came to the world with such a generous heart that just your energy alone can impact everything around you. You spend 10 minutes in that. And then you spent 90% of your week, you're saying, you spent the majority of the 24 hours that you have with everything turned off. And now you're wondering why you can't create. Why is it not creating, right? So this is the good news and the bad news. The cost of admission is staying in that state, right? When we talked about this a week ago for anybody who was on that call, I mentioned it briefly, but when they study, when they study success, they find one thing consistent and what is it? Cause you guys have probably heard every Ted talk, right? You've probably read a lot of books. So what's the one thing that they know is consistent in success? They have a word for it. The word is grittiness, it's grit. And then they study grit and they wanna understand what makes a person have grit. And they find out it's not their IQ, it's not where they come from, it's not their religion, it's not how tall they are, it's not their gender. What is it, what creates grit? There's only one thing they notice that creates grit in every person optimism. Go read the research, look it up. In order for a person to cure cancer, they need to be the most optimistic person in the room. In order for a person to go through 12 rounds of fertility treatment, they need optimism to be gritty, right? Your vision is consistent. That water is on the boil. And that is why it doesn't matter sometimes if this person out there who's doing the thing you want to do is less talented than you. It's not about talent. It's not about IQ. It's about the vision, holding on to that vision, no matter what. How do we do that? We literally feel net positive. And that is something we can learn to do like a samurai, right? This, this is what we've been studying. This is what we've been learning. If you look at someone like the Dalai Lama or Mother Teresa, the weevils wobble, but they don't fall down. There's no fall down there. They've mastered their own energetic vibration. All they'll do is create in the field. By the way, we know how much Mother Teresa did to like take care of people. But do you know that she raised millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars? Did you guys know that about her? She was a magnet for cash. She literally had no problem moving through the world, just raising tons and tons and tons of money, right? And she, that's why she said it takes a checkbook to change the world. And she had no problem receiving all of that because she became a steward of it. Do you understand that? So we, on the other hand, don't realize that we wake up every day <clears throat> and most of this, most of the burners are turned off, right? And by the way, if you study any kind of like Chinese medicine or you look at Kabbalah or you look at anything like that has to do with Kundalini yoga, there's a lot of different wisdom traditions that say the exact same thing about where our energy centers are. Where is their energy stored in the body? And there's energy here, right? There's energy here. There's energy here. There's energy here and there's energy here, right? There's like these points of energy, right? And by the way, why does acupuncture work? Does anyone know? Very simple. So acupuncture, they take a tiny little, a tiny little needle and what is it made of? Is it made of wood? Is it made of plastic? What's it made of? What's the needle made of? Made of metal. 
Why does it work? Because what does metal do? What does metal do? It's a conductor of energy. So where do they take this metal? They put it in places where your energy is stuck. And what do they do? They get it to move, right? Because what are you made of? Energy. You are an energetic being. So when you go into a part of your brain, which starts to lie to you like a washing machine filled with thoughts that tell you you're not enough. There's nothing around you. There are no, there, there's nothing better. You'll, you're, you'll never get there. There's no possibilities. Blah, 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 blah. It literally shuts. It's like, doo, doo, doo. it just like shuts down all your energy. Right. And then you're sitting here trying to create boiling water, but there's no fire on the stove. Type of one in the chat if you get that. So what I teach you is how to turn all this on turn all of this energy on, right? And then because success leaves clues along the way, we know certain things about how a car works, right? You go put gas in it or you charge it if it's electric, right? There are certain things you do when you wanna create certain things, right? If you wanna have a child, there are certain things you do to make a baby, right? If you wanna make money, there are certain things that you do. If you want to make eggs, there are certain things you do. You don't just think about it. You think about it and you're visualizing those eggs, right? Which then gets you to stand up, stand up, go to the kitchen, get the water, get the eggs, right? Put it on the stove. So what we do is we try to combine for you, what are the strategic steps to take? But in order to do them and actually have it work, the most important part, right? Is that we turn on the stove. Because without the burn, without the actual fire, we've got nothing. We can't make anything because what happens every time, it's always, always, always the energy component of anything that makes it work. Just like without Wi-Fi, your cell phone is just a very expensive, you know, paperweight. You need the Wi-Fi, you need the energy. Everything you've ever seen in your life, you can trace it to anything. It doesn't work without energy. In fact, a human being, if a human being dies, God forbid, right, in a hospital, in an ER, what do they do? What do they do to try to get the human being to come back to life? Do they talk to them? Do they, you know, do they try to encourage the, you know, they take two paddles to do what? What do these paddles do? They create an electric current. Why? Because your self, you, when somebody's passed and we say they've passed and their body's still there, why are we saying they've passed? Their body's still there. Oh, because they're not their body. They are the energy inside of that body. And when there's no more energy, we say the person's not there anymore because who is the person? The person is the energy inside of that being. The body's just the vessel, right? So when somebody passes away, they use these paddles to try to create an electric circuit to see if the body will respond. So are we getting that everything is energy and thoughts are not facts? Just FYI, just because you think it doesn't make it true. Just because you tell it to yourself a thousand times a day doesn't make it true. The truth is the world is a lot like what I'm telling you it is. It's all made of energy and you are energy. And when you are clear and coherent and you're aligned and you have this, this signal that you're broadcasting, right? Not only does it create in your life in major ways, but it wires you into consciousness. Now, when they study consciousness, they can't find it. I said this earlier in the week last week, but if I told you to think about the song, We Are the World, you can hear it right now in your head. Where are you hearing it? Well, they've tried to study that. It's not inside your head, actually. It's out here. It's in your consciousness. If I told you to picture your grandmother, my grandmother passed away. Let's say I want to picture her. I can picture her. I know what she's wearing. I can see her face. Where am I seeing it? They, they've looked. It's not inside my brain. It's out here somewhere. That's called consciousness. Isn't that amazing? Why am I saying that? Because when you're tapped in and turned on, you get ideas, you get downloads. You We see on fMRIs that your cognitive capacity actually widens. And then you get insight. You get creativity. And every single person I've ever interviewed has created the conditions for the download, created the conditions for the creativity, and then they get the idea. When Walt Disney 
was flying over Anaheim, what was it? It was swampland. It was hundreds of acres of swamp. And he said to the co-pilot with tears in his eyes, can you see that? And he said, no. And he was like, it's a whole world. And then he took that vision, which was just air, nothing. And he sold that vision to investor after investor and he went through hurdles and eventually he got enough money together and he built the vision. But when did he see the vision? During the building? No, he already saw it. He saw the whole thing in the helicopter flying above Swampland. That's the download. So what comes first? The insight, right? And then we build from that vision, from that insight. So every billion dollars ever made came from, was generated from an insight, a creative thought, a powerful creative thought that's so clear like lightning that the person takes hold of it and doesn't shoo it away like, oh, that was just another idea. It's like, no, that's the idea, right? So that's Jim Henson, that's Picasso. That's every person who's ever created something and just saw it, no, it's that, great. How do you get to that? By creating coherence in your mind. Because when your mind is in fight or flight, you can't hear the creativity. You won't get the insight. There's no room for it. It's all sort of asleep in a fog. So this is what we are talking about. We're talking about how you can become a master manifester in your life. And what are the things that you want to manifest? Tell me in the chat. If you could create, that's what it means to manifest. You become a creator of things. You're here to be a creator. What would you want to create in your life? What do you want to create? Your purpose, a career as a novelist, wealth, a million dollars, security, wellness, travel, huge impact, peace, happiness, a clothing line. Now, when you say those things, tell me what belief do you have around it? Like you, you, you write it down and you say, I want to be a novelist or I want to make a million dollars or I want to have a clothing line. How much out of a hundred percent, if a hundred percent is full, what would you say is your honest belief around how possible that is? 60%. Fifty percent. Okay, so let's go further. Forty percent. What, what is it that keeps you from thinking it's a hundred percent possible in the next ninety days? What, what keeps you from thinking that? Why do you think it's not happening by the end of the first quarter of next year? Because of fear, because of past failures. What does that mean? What does it mean that past failures or fear would make it not possible? Lack of time, lack of evidence, fear of judgment. People don't believe in me. Not being good enough, fear of rejection. So all of that, right? All of that, let's just kind of understand what happens here. We can either operate from our ego, right? Or we can operate from our true self. Do you think that you're, which one, which one would you assign this to? I'm not enough. Is that the true self thought, your highest consciousness, or is that an ego thought? It's an ego, right? because Kathy Heller is just an avatar. I don't really identify with that. You know, there's some bigger version of me. And then there's this story called Kathy Heller that's five, eight and has freckles and has, you know, this kind of car and had this kind of SAT score. But is that really at all what is, impressive or not impressive about me and is that what people transmit back and forth with me not at all 
right? It's something about how much there's an energy, there's a there's something bigger, right? So before I was given that name, I was still me, right? So there's like the real self and then there's the ego. And the ego says a lot of things about lack, right? And we identify that way. We think of ourselves like an ego. And what does the ego also tell you? It tells you about limitation and scarcity, right? But in your soul, how much do you feel you're swimming in? It's endless immediately. It's infinite. And it's amazing how this becomes a virtual reality headset that everybody's wearing. And when you walk around thinking like this little ego and looking at the world like this really limited place, right? Then that's the world that you live in. But when you start to feel the truth, which is that you're bigger than this worthy or unworthy little story in your head, because you are basically like a lightning rod. Every single one of us is like a lightning rod because we're a conductor of energy. That's really all we are. And we have the capacity to be a conductor of love, goodness, kindness, passion, compassion, creativity. That's really it. That's really at our core what we came here to do. Each one of us has the capacity to receive and to give that kind of vibration to the world, period, end of story. When you operate like that, you realize you're in a world that actually is set up to really support you. But when you're coming from your ego, then you see the world as a bunch of other little egos, right? And then everybody's comparing each other to everybody else. And then you think that there's only a little bit available. And then it's all a a battle for who's the most impressive, but none of that ever worked anyway. And this is why I've told you that in interviewing 800 people, everybody has some practice where they've let go of their ego completely. That's the only way that they've become such a creator, such a, a success, right? Because they're not holding on. So when we say egos make people egocentric and egotistical, that's true, right? You want to be soul centered. You want to be coming from really looking at the universe as it actually is, which then you have only the most love and compassion for this whole, because it's all one. It's all one, all of it. It's all one big swirl, one big ecosystem. Everything's interconnected, right? So then if you want to allow yourself right? And I would start using the word allow. That's the word I would use. Instead of using to yourself, even in your own mind, the word desire, instead of saying, I desire to make a million dollars, I want, I desire, I want, I desire, because all of that is you telling yourself over and over on a subconscious level that it's over there, it's over there, it's over there. It's not, it's not available here. It's somewhere else. And you are somewhere apart from where it is. So if you start using the word allow, things start to just feel a little bit different. I'm going to allow that into my life because it's already here. You're swimming in all of it. Every potential is already here. It already exists. That's how it is. We live in an infinite, amazing world. And you can see the evidence of it everywhere, right? Right now, as we sit here, you didn't create the market, but the market exists. It's all around you. People are trading dollars and it's going all around the world every second of every day. You don't have to create it. You just want to allow that into your life. You want to become open to that being a part of your life so that you can become something that generates that and allows that through you. You become a steward of that, right? You don't have to convince, you know, the world that there should be unlimited Wi-Fi. There's already Wi-Fi around every single building in most of the parts of the world. There's tons and tons of Wi-Fi. But what do you need to do? You need to plug into it. You don't need to say, I desire it. I want it. I wish it was here. It already is here. That'd be insane. But you need to plug into it. So there's a million ways in which right now, right? You're just not seeing where the outlet is. And that's the way you start to approach it. It's like, where is there already, right? Where is this already in my life? 
And I'm just blocking my ability to let this in. You know, my husband lived next door to me. And when I was 23, 24, 25, uh, I was friends with him and I was dating other people. And then I would go on dating apps and then I was taking trips to New York City and different places and looking for this person. He lived next door to me. I knew him for three years, but I didn't see him. He was hidden in plain sight. I saw him. I knew who he was. I liked him. I didn't see him like that. And my sister one day said to me, why don't you date him? You guys get along. You always laugh together. It's, you know, and I was like, I don't know. I just, we're so different. We're so opposite. I can't see that at all. I haven't, I was looking for a certain archetype of a person, right? Really, if you want to know, I was looking for Patrick Dempsey because Grey's Anatomy was like everything at the time. And he's so cute and he's so like walks in a room and it's like charisma machine. And um, my husband and I wound up having this weird, awkward, because we were friends, we had this awkward, weird conversation about how now my sister and one of our friend's fathers and like a few people had said, why don't you guys date each other? You're always together. And we thought that was really weird because we had chemistry as friends, but we hadn't like thought about that at all. It was kind of a weird conversation to have. And we kind of awkwardly laughed about it. I'm like, oh my God. And then my friend's father dared us. He's like, you guys should go on a date. I see you together all the time. Just go. And we were like, this is so awkward and weird. We've been friends for three years. We went on a date and it was just like dumb because it was like, we always hung out anyway. And I, at the end I was like, all right, let me just go home. But you know, it, it was so weird. Anyway, we wound up going on a second date. And on the second date, we, uh, we both looked at each other and we were like, is this it? Like, I'm so at home with you. And it, does this mean this is it? And then we were both like, I think so. That's so weird. We was only our second date. And then we were both obsessed with each other. And then we couldn't believe we literally couldn't believe that we had been friends for three years. We were in pictures together. We had taken trips with other friends together. And we couldn't believe that that was real. It was such a surreal experience. And then, um, you know, we've been together now for 17 years. And that's its own interesting story. And um, and I have all my interesting lessons that I've learned from marriage and all of that. But I have seen it over and over and over again in my life that it's always already there. Every time, all the time, it's already there. When I had gotten dropped from the record label, I had this thought, which is, okay, that's the end, pack it up, like go do something completely different because my thoughts told me the only way to make it really big is to have a record contract and you now lost that. So head on out and then there I was reading a billboard magazine two and a half years later. And the story was that all these indie artists who didn't have record deals were licensing their music to TV shows like Grey's Anatomy. And I was like, that's an interesting thought. Well, I can write music. I know how to do that. But I didn't think that there was a person already existing in the world, sitting at a desk somewhere, looking for someone just like me right now. And so I started to do that reaching out and then I quit all my jobs. And then I, for 10 years, made hundreds of thousands of dollars a year just writing music for McDonald's and Grey's Anatomy and Pretty Little Liars. And it was like, people were like, how did you do that? I'm like, because it's always there. It's just about noticing what else is there that you didn't see before. But often our minds are so, it's all black and white. It's either like, I'm going to get some big break and Clive Davis is going to see me singing in the back of a church or nothing. It's like, there's a million ways in which everything you want is already right there all the time. And when you start to see through the lenses that look for clues all the time, it's amazing what comes into your life. It's incredible because you just let it in. You just turn on all these different faucets and they're already there. You just hadn't let that in. And I have that experience over and over again. And then a friend of mine said, why don't you start a podcast? And this was like the easiest thing in the world. I mean, I literally just got my laptop, sat in my old closet. And on the other end of that was a whole world, right? It was just like an unbelievable experience. And 
it was sitting right there. Like I literally remember when rainbow bright would like open a door and on the other side was like a rainbow. It's like, I walked into my closet and it wasn't a walk-in closet. I was sitting on the floor. These accordion doors opened. I was sitting underneath my coat and I had a shoe rack and I put my laptop there and I was recording it. That's what my closet looked like at the time. And on the other side of having the courage to do that thing, there was checks from sponsors and then millions of dollars a year and then incredible opportunities and then book deals. It was like, I just had to sit down in my closet. I didn't have to go get a degree. I didn't have to go prove myself. I actually just was myself. And literally I can give you a list of those things every single second. And we just have um, lulled our brains to sleep, right? And so if you want to create a fashion line next year, then as long as you believe that that's already there, you will. If you want to create a million dollars in your life, then you will, first of all, open up your capacity to receive that level of energy, right? I'll tell you a story about this, which I think will help you get the point. So in order to receive energy, you have to be able to hold it you have to have the capacity to hold it. So a story that illustrates this is um, during COVID, because it was such a bummer time for everybody and my kids especially were feeling so stuck and there were so many things that they didn't get to do. We decided to like make a Clark Griswold kind of Christmas lights situation at our house. And my husband said to me, there's so many lights and so many blow up toys. And like, you've got the reindeers and the, the, he's like, you literally bought everything possible. It's not going to work. And I always think that everything works. So I'm like, you're such a Debbie downer, just stay out of it. So I hire these guys to literally cover the house. Like you've never seen like a spectacle. Every tree we bought with the gingerbread house, the reindeer, the thing that goes around like this, like every single possible thing. The guys come, they put it up. It cost me thousands and thousands of dollars to buy all the stuff. It cost me a few thousand dollars for them to put it up and install. And sure enough, what happens? What happens when the lights get turned on? Everything, everything isn't working. Circuit breaks, doesn't work. So we go back in and I'm like determined. I keep like pressing that little, you know, like how on the little circuit breaker, you can turn the thing and turn it back. And then on the little outlets, there's like a button for like test and retest. And I'm like pressing it and pressing it and pressing it. My husband's like, I told you that it's not going to work. And I think this is such a great metaphor for what we're talking about because what was needed, what wound up being needed? What is needed for me to hold that much light? Yeah, a higher capacity, more amps, right? And so what we realized was we needed an electrician fast. We needed to actually build out the panel so that we could hold more watts. And because it was Christmas Eve, we couldn't get an electrician. So that Christmas, there was no lights, even though there were tons and tons of, you know, and um, what does that teach us about energy? So people come to me all the time. They're like, I want to make a million dollars, right? I want to allow that into my life. What's your capacity to receive right now? How much can you hold? How much do you allow yourself to hold and receive period? If somebody gives you a compliment, do you go, thank you so much? Or do you go, no, 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 what? no, 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 you're wrong. I'm this, blah, blah, blah. I like your shirt. You shouldn't like my shirt. It's ugly. like when somebody holds the door for you, when somebody decides to buy you dinner, you go out to dinner and someone's like, I'm gonna pay for it. Do you say, you're just the coolest friend. Thank you. Or do you go, no, absolutely not. Do not buy it for me. What is your capacity to receive how much can you hold? If you go to a dinner for your birthday and you're sitting with 20 friends and they each go around the table and they want to be able to pour into you, 
how much you mean to them. How much of a capacity do you have to tolerate it and to receive it and to just say thank you? Or how much do you want to say, oh my God, you guys, this is so embarrassing and hard and I can't stand it and I can't wait till it's over. And then you say, I'd really love to receive tons of visibility, a giant audience, millions of dollars. And I'm really frustrated that I don't have those things in my life. But moment by moment, what I practice is the inability to receive. I don't have the capacity to take my ego's narrative out of the way and be a soul and allow myself as a soul to receive. Because I have to have a story about what I'm worth and I have to create a story about how impressive I am or I'm not. And then how do you think you do that with everything else? It's a miracle, actually, right? That you're even having whatever you are having in your life. Because most of the time when you look at it, our life is an indication of our capacity, how much good we can tolerate. And I mean that. It's one thing when we say how much we desire, but when you look at how we feel physically, when people give to us and it feels like all this resistance comes up, when somebody is there to truly genuinely applaud you or truly genuinely wanna support you and something starts to feel like you're gonna throw up, that's all ego. That's all conditioning. That's all a kid that at some moment in time felt that love was earned and you don't feel like you earned it. And it has to be earned, but love is not earned. Love is a gift. If somebody is loving and it's actually love, it's unconditional. It's not based on a condition. If love is conditional, that's some, something different. That's a transaction. That's fine but that's not inherently what receiving is about. And so we start to look at our capacity to let go of our ego so that we can actually receive. Do you know how good it feels to give to someone? You know, because you've had moments like that where you want to shower your kid or your husband or your best friend. And what do you really want them to do? You want them to receive it. You want them to just go, thank you so much. What you don't want is something to go, no, 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 thank you, but no, thank you. That doesn't feel good. That feels bad, right? And so we actually deny people such a gift when we don't allow ourselves to receive. It doesn't feel good. People, when, when somebody gives to you and you receive it, you inherently tell that person that what they have to give matters and that there's some level of contribution and there's some level of what they're providing that actually has so much merit. But when we just hold off, you know, some kind of like, you know, no, I don't want any of that. That's a problem. And so in people's work, right? And in the way you operate in the world, there's this feeling that's unconscious, but it's kind of like, well, who would I be if I received all of that? It doesn't feel really, I don't feel worthy of it. I can tell you, I remember the first time that I stayed at the Hotel Bel Air. We, we tend to stay at really, really, really nice hotels. I know there's different people who have different sort of things that they love. Some people are like foodies. Some people love shoes. I have one pair of high heels. That's how much I care about shoes. And I know a lot of women are like, oh my God, that's like sacrilegious. I hate wearing heels, hate. So I have one pair of Jimmy shoes that my stylist bought for me and I don't even wear them because they don't feel comfortable. So I walk around in Golden Goose and Zadig and Voltaire sneakers and Birkenstock sandals, mostly Birkenstock sandals. And I call it a day. The thing I do love is really, really nice hotels 
when we go to a really, really nice hotel, I feel like it like recalibrates my whole system. It's like a mystical experience for me. It's spiritual. I love it. But I can remember the very first time we stayed at Hotel Bel Air. When we stay there now, we stay in this canyon suite that has its own pool and a fireplace. And it's amazing. And I can order room service and I can just go from, sometimes I stay there by myself. I very, very often on my birthday, I'll go to this one suite by myself. And because I'm by myself, I can literally be naked, put on a robe, go in the pool, get out because we have your own, you have your own pool. It's insane. And it's hot. So it's like an amazing, I mean, it's like out of control. Amazing. The very first time I stayed at Hotel Bel Air, we didn't stay in the suite. We just stayed in like a regular room. And I remember showing up there, eating lunch, going to the room and taking a shower after I had a massage. And when I got in the shower, I started sobbing because it was so unbelievably luxurious and over the top. And there was a part of my old self that was like shedding itself. Like that this old part of me was like, I can't believe I'm worthy of this amazing shower with the perfect water pressure and the most amazing smelling soap and the floor that's heated. And like, who am I to be in here? Right? Like that old program was like, crying itself out in the shower. Like, I can't believe I'm worthy of all of this, right? You've seen that sometimes where that feeling creeps up on people. Like people go to accept the Oscar and then they start crying like, oh my God, I can't believe how much you guys love me. Or I can't believe that this actually happened because there's a part of them that is like, I'm still that little kid who's not sure that in sixth grade, anyone likes me right? And you see those tears and it's very sweet and it's very vulnerable. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but I am saying that we have to have the capacity to receive and it's not easy to do. And so you'll see people who in certain areas of their life, they do let themselves accept an Oscar, but then they'll sabotage everything else in their life just to keep themselves a little bit uncomfortable. So they don't have to fully receive because the more you receive, the more you become like a soul and less like an ego. And the more you just keep that capacity open to receive and to receive and to receive, then you receive and then you give and you become so much more yourself, right? So I think it's interesting for us to become conscious of what we actually hold for and stand for. And so part of what we do is we work on this. And so I just want to remind you guys some of the details because people are been asking, they want, you guys want to know the answers to some of these questions. And I want to make sure that I answer these questions. So over the course of literally as of Thursday, if you guys want to join me in the quilt every single week, we're coaching, we're meditating, we're working on this stuff and you're working together on this stuff. And for some of you, that's an amazing place to be because you can start putting that water on the boil and start getting it to simmer and start changing the way that you feel and the way you think and the way you perceive. And so you can get into that. And by the way, we decided to make this special because we weren't even going to offer this. We were just going to offer made to do this, but we got so many notes from people worried about juggling with the holidays, which I understand. So anyone who wants to join me to do this, the way that will work is you will go into the quilt for free for three months and you'll start watching on your own time, the pre-recorded videos for me to do this and abundant ever after. So you can start working on your abundance. You can start working on really distilling what is it that you're going to be made to do. And then we'll do all of these extra live calls in addition to the weekly calls with me in the quilt, but we'll do all the extra live calls in January after the holidays. And so if you want to get in on all, all of that, you can go to kathyhoward.com slash made to do this. And that is a combination of sort of the strategy as well as the energy work to manifesting abundance in your life, period. If you want to just start doing the quilt calls for now, and you can think about the course later, then by Friday, if you sign up, we're waiving the initiation fee and you get 25% off. 
and really the amount of value that's in this program. It's kind of like these calls. It's like, it's hard for me to think of anything else that I've seen that has this kind of value. And so I don't really know that we are pricing it at the equal value that it is. I think it's extremely valuable, um, but it is here now at an additional discount just so that you guys can get inside of this. And I think if this is feeling at all like it realigns you and gives you clarity, then I would get inside of it. And you can go to kathyhoff.com slash join and use the code thread before Friday to get that discount. I think that this work is essential in our lives. And I, I think you, you will know if I'm your person. And if I'm not your person, then you should trust that completely and totally. And you should find the person who speaks your language because there's so many beautiful teachers out there. And one way or another, you don't need to choose me. You just need to choose yourself and this message. And so if you can find um, a teacher who can teach you these principles and there's so many other good ones in the world, then do that. But don't sit in the same place day after day, right? Don't do that to yourself because you miss out on daylight. You miss out on your life. You miss out on being this creative force in the world that could build a whole movement, a whole platform that could help so many people that can make millions of dollars and help so many people and be fulfilled. And then you're just getting started, right? So if this feels like a place where you can really come alive, choose that. If you feel like there's something better for you out there, find it because there's so many great teachers who do this stuff. Really, you know that that's true. So it doesn't have to be with me, but if this feels like it, then join it. And those are the two ways that I can help you after today, because today is our last call for this, for this boot camp. Does anyone have any questions about the two programs I just said? And then I'll take questions about your life and we can do some coaching as well. Um, so just, um, as you, you can put it, yeah, she just dropped it in the chat. So you can choose your own adventure. If you want to do made to do this, instead of getting all of it in three months, we've decided to give you guys would drip out the content over the next three months while you're in the quilt. And then you'll have basically six months because you'll have a, lo a lot of live calls extra at the end of January. So you have a six month experience. So you don't have to get it all done during the holidays. So if you want that, you can go to kathyhoff.com slash made to do this. And if you want to do the quilt, which is just a weekly call, um, so you don't have to take on all those other things, but if that feels right for you, you can go to kathyhoff.com slash join. But the goal that, that I'm really setting out to do with you every time we're together is to help you create abundance in your life. What is abundance? It's an abundance of you being able to receive all possibilities that are in the field. So you can create abundance in a sense of feeling such purpose, in a sense of creativity, in a sense of having those downloads, in a sense of making and print, 3D printing tons of money in your life, tons of contribution in your life, just a full 180 degrees, 360 degrees of abundance in your life. That is the point. And that's why we put together Made to Do This at Abundant Ever After for you guys to go through those two programs because they really are very, very, they're, they're very much complements of each other. One is looking at what are you made to do what is your purpose and how do you find it, right? So if you haven't found it yet, you do this program. And the other one is at the same time, you're going through the abundant ever after modules to really become a master of manifesting and creativity and abundance in your life, which will change, will really change the way you feel, will really change so much about life for you. Um, and yes, everything that we do live is always recorded and you get sent the recording. So if you can't make it to the quilt calls, you will be able to see those calls. Um, so I just want to reiterate in case people need to get off the calls because there's people di direct messaging me on the Zoom. People are like, tell me again, what are the things? So eski has been putting the links in the chat um, just so that you guys know. So the quilt is a weekly call with me where we do coaching. We're going to do meditation. We're going to work on you entering the next frontier of your life, right? And before Friday, if you sign up before Friday and you use the code thread, it will work. It will stop working after Friday. It's just an extra little like jolt for you guys to get 
your initiation fee waived and for you to get 25% off. If you're alumni, you get an even better rate. So you can reach out to anyone on my team or DM me on Instagram or talk to hello at kathyheller.com and you can get your alumni code if you don't have it. And then for anybody who wants to like work with me for the next six months and do the course, we're really going to start calling it the course because we really combine the two signature programs I do and you get access to both of them, Abundant Ever After and Made to Do This. And the live calls will start at the end of January, but you can start watching those calls, the pre-recorded modules, you can start watching them and you can have three months of the quilts and then you can go through the course with me at the end of January where we will weave together you showing up for your divine purpose and you being a master of your own energy and manifestation and I think all of that together will help you have the best results and abundance in your life. And so we've weaved all that together. So if you want to start that, you can go to kathyheller.com slash made to do this, and you will get access to made to do this and abundant ever after. And you'll start watching those curriculum pieces and you can get three months of the quilt for free. And then you'll be in there with me for six months. So if you want that, that's there for you. So you have those two choices. Does anyone have any questions about that? Is anyone confused about that? If you have any thoughts or things you want me to shed light on now is the time because this is our last call of this workshop and then we will be we won't be we won't be here to to answer any questions and you can let me know in the chat um do we have a date yet when well, we're going to start in january we're going to start once everybody's back but you'll be with me if you're in the program for six months you'll be with me every single week um for the quilt and then uh, those curriculum calls will start once everybody's back from, you know, people usually don't get back on January 1st, right? It's like, we don't really get back to life until the 6th. And then some people are, you know, kind of restarting. And so somewhere the second or third week of January, once everybody's back, we can start. Um, but you can start right away, right? You can get ready to get ready. You can start watching the curriculum of Abundant Ever After. You can start doing those worksheets. You can start looking at made to do this, whether you're on the regular level or the VIP level, you can start doing the work over the next few months so that once we're ready in January to go deeper, you've already got a head start. That's not a bad idea, right? I mean, think about if you've only been with me for the last week and a half, think about how much is starting to turn the wheels in your head, right? So if you want to get in on all of that, um, I don't think it's a bad way to go. Um, yes. Yes, if you are already in made to do this, you will get an invite for the quilt call that is tomorrow. That's right. And so this doesn't have to end. And like I said, because of people like Janine who've come through my program, because of all of the different women that I've seen step into their values, step into their life, step into their expansion, uh, I feel morally obligated to make a great case for you guys to be doing this work. And I, I think that there are so many other people who can teach you this and you know that, the, that that's true. And so you can find your way to that. At the same time, I think this community is particularly special. And if you want to do it in this community with me, I feel like there's something I've never seen before in the women who are attracted to this particular community. And you'll make the kind of friends and feel seen in a way I think you probably haven't in a long time. So I vote for this community because it's much bigger than me. And I, I think these women are extraordinary. So if you want to do it here, those are your two choices. You can go to kathyheller.com slash made to do this, or you can go to kathyheller.com slash join and join the quilts. So um, the quilt meets every Thursday and we're going to, we always listen to you guys. So we'll take a, um, we'll take a poll. And if people need another time to meet, we might sprinkle in a few of those calls at a different time so that you guys will have that. But all of the calls are obviously recorded and you'll get sent those as well. Um, okay. So I feel like um, I, I, I see often these amazing like memes, you know, and one of them that I've seen that, uh, that hits me every time I see it is some, it says, this is what it says. It says some people consider the cost of a retreat or a coach. And some people consider the cost of being in the same place a year from now. 
And I think about that a lot because I'm the kind of person who spends money on personal development. And I see my life as having a direct impact from those things. And I mean, if you guys knew the amount of time and investment I spent to live in Jerusalem and study mysticism for three years or to study um, and take classes at UCLA for three years or to study and go on retreats. I was just in Vail for six days silently meditating, right? And I was willing to spend thousands of dollars just to be silent for six days. Um, and I'm, I'm the kind of person who I have to do that in order to maintain, right? The maintenance. And so if this feels like um, it's starting to permeate, right? Then I would think about what is the cost to do it? And what is the cost of staying in the same place and being in the same place in 90 days or in six months? Because I'll tell you, the people who join this, you won't be in the same place. You won't see the world the same way. You won't have the same life. It is a full control, alt, delete, software, update, paradigm shift in your life. And you have to decide for yourself what, what really are the costs that you're weighing, right? And everybody knows what that is. But what I often see is people making a decision and then very often they feel like, oh my gosh, I could have been resourceful and I could have really thought about my own belief in what else is possible for me. And could I have invested and seen what would happen if I invested the time in myself and in my purpose and in taking inspired action and in changing my energy? How could my life change? How could I change my children's future, right? Because we model for our kids so much. So anyway, I'm so grateful that we spent all of this time together. It was so much fun. It was just such a beautiful place to be together and such good energy. And you guys, it was so kind. Like everybody was so supportive of everybody else. There was no negativity at all, right? That's something that's so powerful about this work and in, in the container that is attracted to this work. I've never, not one time, not once have I been on a Zoom call and there's like one person saying like nasty, like it's just amazing what is attracted, you know? It's like a a very high vibe. I, I appreciate you guys. I love you. You're so easy to love. Every one of you who has shared, who's come on these calls, I appreciate it so much. And I would love to work with you and I'd love to make you certain of my belief in you and in the world that you're already in. And I would love you to take the, the wheel and, and direct and steer your, your life to where it's really meant to go. And I'd love to see you do that. I'd love to help you do that. If you want to do that with me, then you should choose one of those options. And if you go into the quilt before Friday, you get to have that thread code and you get to have 25% off and it waives your initiation. If you want to be part of my six months of coaching and you want to start right now to go through the abundant ever after curriculum and the made to do this curriculum, then you can start right now and join me for free in the quilt, which then also lets you know that you're going to be with me for another three months in the beginning of the year and your 2024. That's your insurance policy that you have a different year. So anyway, sending you guys lots of love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of this. Have an amazing day.